Hello everyone, welcome to The Totally Well Show. I'm your host, Joyce Strong. The Totally Well Show is a place where we get curious, ask questions, and explore everything to do with health, wellness, fitness, and all the things that helps, to, helps you live the highest quality, most fulfilling life. I'm here with my guest, Kim Manning. Hi. Welcome, Kim. Thank you for having I'm, me. Yeah, I'm so excited to get to know you more. Kim is a health coach and health educator. Mm -hmm. um, you can find her at her website, www.kimberlysmanning.com. And on Facebook, she has a, a page, Coach Kim Manning. Um, you may have seen her at Dragonfly um, over at Devon's. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, I have a lot, lots of questions. You do many things, classes and um, workshops and individual coaching. Yep. Um, but first I want to find out, how did you get into this? Oh, it was sort of a, an indirect path. Um, when I, back pre-children, I was in healthcare as an analyst at um, Harvard Pilgrim and um, also a veterinary technician. So I have that, I like healthcare, I like medicine, I like um, health in general. Um, I stayed home with my kids. Um, and How many kids do you have? I have two. Yeah. Two, 19 and 16. Yeah. So girl, I, boy? A girl, 19 year old girl yeah. and a 16 year old boy. Yeah. So when they were younger, having that medical knowledge, especially from the veterinary field, I, mean, I was in surgery and I was in emergency medicine. Yeah. So I, I have that medical knowledge. Um, so it really helped with my kids but also for myself to keep me healthy and keep my kids healthy. And then once they were sort of launching, I had more time, I decided, okay, what am I gonna do more? I'd been done some photography and um, needed a new shift. So I did one of those little tests. This is like a long way to get there. Um, this little test, MAPP, which helps you figure out you know, what career you might like. And health educator came up. And I had mm -hmm. never heard of a health educator. so. Um, I decided to do that and I got my master's in health education so I'm a certified health education specialist so it's health and wellness promotion mm -hmm. and during that coursework there was a health coaching um, class I could take and I always love psychology it's probably one of my favorite topics I love 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 um, psychology but I didn't want to have patience. I didn't want that level. So I saw this coaching class and it could never fit in my coursework. Mm -hmm. So when I got out, um, it stayed with me and I hadn't, I didn't have um, experience. So I wasn't getting jobs as a health educator. Uh, again, I have a lot of people had careers that they, that they then did that supplemented it, but I was relaunching into the workforce. Mm -hmm. So I took the health coaching and loved it. Mm -hmm. I, it was like it combined my love of psychology, it combined my love of health, and I really found um, I loved helping people because even for myself, when I've gone through my own physical, mental, whatever it was, I wish I had somebody there to help me. So this gives me that ability to help others who are looking for supports as mm -hmm. they also go through challenges or try to figure out what they want to do. Um, and I just sort of fell in love with it. So now I do both education and the um, coaching because I like the variety. Mm -hmm. So you and I know the difference between, because we both do coaching and we both do education in yeah. our own special ways. We yeah. have our own special sauce. Um, but for our audience, I would really, and I think I've, I think you teach a class on this, mm -hmm. on what is a health coach. Mm -hmm. And I'd really love to ha have you educate our audience a little bit about the difference there because yeah. I think sometimes people are reluctant to come in for health mm -hmm. help because they, they think um, they can do it themselves mm -hmm. or they see they, it's to them identifying that there's something wrong with them. Right. And you and I know that's they couldn't be be more wrong about that. Right. Right. Um, so can you tell talk a little bit on that subject? Yeah. So there's a, so a lot there. Um, so coaches, you know, I think the primary misconception that I get from people is they think, okay, you're going to tell me what to do and we don't. Mm -hmm. um, an educator can give you information, mm -hmm. but a health coach only provides information if asked. We are there to help guide our clients 
um, towards their goals and what they want or help them figure it out because we can always think more clearly when we work with somebody. There's that brainstorming aspect. Um, you, it's interesting just how much clarity you gain when you can talk through those things. So a health coach is really there for support. It's there uh, to ask the right questions that guide you to start thinking um, more clearly or outside the box, more creatively. Um, and we're not there to tell you what's right for you. We're there to help support you to go try things out for yourself um, or figure out what you want to try by asking questions that got, that lead you there. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that, you know, for coaching, I've had people um, come to me and say, you know, we had a coach who just made me feel bad about myself. And that's not coaching. We start with what you're doing well, and we build off of that. Mm -hmm. um, and anybody can get coaching. I have people come to me for help on their career. And although I'm not a career coach, I'm not going to help somebody with their resume or with an executive level job. But, you know, I've helped people figure out where they want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, that I'm not happy where I am. I want something different, but I don't know what it is. Or I, I have this idea, but everybody tells me it's stupid. So then I'm just there to sort of help them talk through those steps. Um, so, so you're not going to say, oh, you know what you'd be good at? You're, right. you're going to um, ask questions. Yes. One of the exercises I did in coach training w stuck with me. And, it, and I, I always think of, as a coach, we put our hands, we sit on our hands. And the exercise was um, a piece of paper. Yeah. The, first, they divided us up into two, two sections. And we all had to make a paper airplane. Yeah. And those whose planes, planes could fly were the coaches. Oh. And the other were now being coached. And so as your coach, I would say, here's your piece of paper and start making your airplane. Yeah. And you would say, you would start to fumble with it because yours didn't fly. So obviously you didn't know what you were doing. I can't tell you what to do next. Yeah. I can't say fold it in half. Right. So I would say, have you ever built a paper airplane before? Do you ever know anybody who did? Um, have you built, have you, you know, what do you think you have to do next? Right. You know, that kind of thing. Right. So what have you tried? What have you what tried? else could you try? Yeah, what didn't work? Right. So, um, that prompting, but it's not to tell, because I don't, I don't know what's going to work for you. Right. You might build one better than mine. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I do get a lot of that with people, especially if they come for weight loss, mm -hmm. you know, or something, because there are so many different trends out there and so many different, um, ways and you know if you really need specifics then a nutritionist is the best person for you to go to or a dietitian but there's there's some basics mm -hmm. right that that I can help you um, understand or implement mm -hmm. but really you have to decide what's right for you I am not going to tell you you should be a vegan or you should eat paleo mm -hmm. that is an entirely decision on your part mm -hmm. um, and one that only you can make but we can talk about the pros and cons and brainstorm about it and then give you the information so you can make a decision down the road for you. It's so empowering just yeah. hearing you speak and how respectful you are to, to you know, recognizing people whole and unbroken mm -hmm. and respect respecting their ability to grow yeah. on their own and just helping them to gain that confidence. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I think that, you know, there's there are many people with you know, that are coaches, and there's um, a lot of great ones out there. And, and if I don't think somebody, um, I refer to other coaches too, mm -hmm. because I do think that the right people for us will come to us. That's right, yeah. um, but I, I do think that um, you start with what people do well. Nobody wants to be made to feel bad about themselves. We always will do better when we feel good mm -hmm. and we feel cherished. And so for me, it doesn't matter what the topic is. My goal is to make you feel supported, comfortable, not judged, mm -hmm. and that you can feel, be successful and make progress in what you're doing. So um, it, it doesn't matter the topic to me. Mm -hmm. It's you have a safe space when you're with me. I love that. And if you don't yeah. feel safe, then you need. We, then let's find you somebody where you do feel safe with. 
Yeah, that's so important. I know the word coach is often used as a kind of generic term, mm -hmm. um, and so it, the skill of coaching is a whole a whole new thing. Yeah. yeah. And especially with the certifications, yeah. right? Because there's a lot of people who call themselves coaches, but maybe they're really a fitness instructor. Mm -hmm. or, um, But there is that science of coaching, right? There's psychology you have to learn and certain you know um, skills and tools to use. Mm -hmm. And so I did sit, um, I was trained at Well Coaches, which I love their program. Me too. Were, oh, that's yeah. oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, love Well Coaches. But then I actually sat for the national board's exam, so mm -hmm. I am actually now a nationally board certified health and wellness coach, which mm -hmm. is, you know, it feels good. And it's not that it's necessary to have that, but it just lets people know that I did, I did meet some requirements, mm -hmm. you know, and I do know there's an ethics involved and there are things that we should or should not be doing and mm -hmm. I know what those are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I see a lot of coaches are, are you can do this, or you've got this, and it's kind of cheerleader, which I was yeah. a cheerleader too, and, and that can help, but it can also come off as not authentic. Yeah. And uh, so there's, a, there's a, a, a sense of authenticity and validation that you can offer as a trained coach, right. where it's, 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 a, it's a real, you know, you're recognizing something about right. that person, and you're trained to look for their gifts. Right. Well, and I think in the cheerleader, I think sometimes we do need that cheerleader, but mm -hmm. you're right, when, when, the, when our clients start relying on us to make them feel better, mm -hmm. then there's, there's a disconnect there. They have to learn to be self-reliant, that they can do it on their own, and that they are capable of making these, these choices and moving forward. And so they feel good about themselves because that internal um, reward is much stronger and longer lasting than an external reward. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think I try to I try to keep myself from cheerleading too much. I was also a cheerleader. <laughs> um, and we do want somebody in our court, but also I think I remind myself, why don't you know say to them, my um, my knowledge that you can do better is stronger than your doubt. Mm -hmm. You know, and there is a quote and I missed That's forgetting it. what it is, yeah. but I think that's a better way to cheerlead. Mm -hmm. I know you can do this yeah. um, for these reasons, you yeah. know. One of the expressions I remember too is being stuck in the muck. And um, oftentimes I'll see people, like especially like in Facebook groups, they'll be, mm -hmm. you can do this. And the person is stuck in the muck and they need right. to be there. Right. And acknowledging where they're there and not rescuing them and not trying to soothe them. Right. But uh, to kind of sit mm. there with them in the muck while they're struggling. Yeah. Um, that's where I think the most growth is happening. Yeah. And, um, and actually being brave enough to go there with them. And it's hard as a coach mm. when you have a client who's, who is stuck and you see them struggling, but you they're not ready yet. And sometimes... I've had where they've had to leave mm -hmm. with, um, and they're not feel maybe maybe they didn't have like they're not feeling their greatest like oh this is great because you want every time for them to leave feeling mo so much better, but sometimes depending on what was brought up, that may not be the case. But what I have found is, it's because things are processing, yeah, and they've there there's some things that are coming up that maybe they haven't thought about before, and they're a little scared or they're nervous. And then over the week, it's like they get transformed. Yeah, and fast. It, yeah, and yeah. then they come back like, that was great. And they did all these things that you're like, we didn't even talk about that. But they, but whatever it was, um, they heard it or they, they felt it themselves. Yeah. They were unsure. And then it, it somehow processed. It's like and they were launched. Exactly. And then they come <laughs> back and you're like, oh, thank goodness. Because you, you're worried. Like, I don't want you to leave feeling in that discomfort. But... When we work through that discomfort, that's where we get stronger. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes it's not as quick as I would like them to be, but it, that's, I'm not there to make them better. I'm, I'm there just to guide them as they help themselves they, they figure it out. They don't need to be made better. They're better already. Right, <laughs> right. exactly. <laughs> Perfect, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Do you have any, any particular uh, success stories, Some, something that wouldn't, you know, uh, um, give away anybody's privacy, but anything yeah. that uh, stick comes to mind that you've been really happy or proud about? Yeah, I actually, um, 
one that comes to mind because it's not it's health and wellness coaching, but not directly. You know, because mm-hmm. there's so many factors that go into well-being. But I had um, a man, a young man, come to me because um, he just wasn't happy. He felt sort of stuck, and he. Um, he was in a career, he had gotten his master's and did that whole trek and he was miserable. And there was a job he was applying for because he you know, needed to get a job. And his girlfriend said, you need to go talk to Kim. And so he came to me and we worked through all of those, those thoughts and things were taught and the misconceptions about, well, why are you in this field? What are you doing there? The, the family pressures, what everybody else tells you you should be doing. Mm-hmm. And we worked through that and he had an idea of what he wanted to do but not how to get there because he also had this guilt, right? The family wasn't supportive of him and he had to make money and how do you do that? And now he is in a field that he loves and um, you know started out with something entry level and has worked and found something that works with his schedule and he's really happy Mm -hmm. so that makes me feel really well that um, because sometimes we want people come in and they want to be you know helped with my diet or this but maybe really it is is that the the job you're in is bringing you down and if you felt better there that might actually help you feel better in other areas or be more successful so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not always what we we come to the table to do. Yeah. Sometimes we find that there's something else we have to work on first. Yeah. Um, so many people come to me for weight loss and I've kind of been known for that. Yeah. And and I can help with it, but it's it's not about the food. You know, right. it's like you need a new job, you need to get divorced, you need to get right. you need to move out of your parents' house. You know, these other things have to happen. Right. I, I mean I can't tell you that, but you'll figure it out. There's something making you unhappy. Right. And um, your body's letting you know. Exactly. And I, they said, I love psychology. And so I'm very much into that mind-body connection Yeah, yeah. because so much of our thinking causes physical changes in our bodies, um, which, you know, so sometimes in order to actually be healthier physically, we need to deal with the stressors or the the thought processes or or the stories we've told ourselves or people Mm. have told us. We need to face those in order to help heal the physical body. You just said something that's, um, I think, a key piece. Um, uh, I guess the word I think of is identity. And you mm-hmm. said the stories we've told ourselves. Can you mm-hmm. just help our audience hear a little bit more about mm-hmm. what that means? So I think because um, I think when I first heard it, I was like, I don't tell myself stories. I got kind of defensive when I thought of that. Yeah, like it's true. You know, I you know this was the case. You know, I did have a terrible second grade teacher. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's more when we define who we are or what, like, I'm not good in math. Mm -hmm. Or somebody says, um, you know, it's that, that usually it's an I'm not good enough. And that was told because you didn't get good grades in school. But that could have been a bad teacher. It could have been the wrong school environment. It could have been that you weren't ready for what you were going through or the teaching style wasn't appropriate for you. There's so many reasons why these stories come up. Um, or they could be that, you know, I rescue people, you know, I'm, I'm a rescuer, or I am um, the party planner. And, and as you get tied up into these labels, you, we may lose who we really are, or we don't allow ourselves to evolve or become something else. It, and so those stories may not always be true for us, but maybe we hang on to them. So it's about releasing those labels. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe they served us in the past, right? To protect us for some, yeah. They develop somewhere, yeah. For exactly. Good or for bad. And some, they're not always bad either, right? Mm-hmm. And it could be like you know, for me, I do like helping people, and that's sort of that label. I am a mom. I always will be a mom. I cherish that label. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it that's continues not to serve only you. who I am. Right, right, right. You know yeah. that. So it's making sure that, yeah, you just. Um, making sure the stories are working for you still. So do you know how I learned how to, since we both, beside being coaches, we're also into hockey. Yes. Um, so do you know how I became a hockey player? No. I declared it. Good for you. And then I got my skates. <laughs> I'm a hockey player. And I got a stick and I got gloves. 
and I had to own it. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Right. And I mean, that's a, that's fantastic. I mean, right to to claim it before you do it. I don't think I'm there yet. I would have to but do more. But doesn't the vision have to come first? That you the belief that I um, say a person is stuck with. Um, I'm not good at math. Yeah. And in fact, they just never studied it or practiced it. Yeah. Maybe they don't love math, but it's not, not necessarily that they're bad at math. That right. They, you know, right. They could do, do basic functions at it. Yeah. Um, I like that. Or I don't, I, I'm not a good cook. I don't know how to cook. Right. Yeah. I think for me, I have routinely maybe not as been as confident in, in claiming that first. And then I am more the... I'm going to try this. I, I'll try something new. Yeah, yeah. And if I like it and I'm doing it, okay, now I can claim it. Yeah, yeah. But I... Well, I the liking it's important, and you have to have some aptitude, I guess, for certain things. Yes, yeah, for but sure. But I love that, that yeah. claiming it, claim it before you do it. That's okay. So I was like you because... I looked at my five kids, and they could all skate. And guess who held them up the first time? I couldn't skate, but I could hold them up. Yeah. And I watched them, and I was like, they came from me. I've got the same genes. Yeah. I can do this. Oh. I know I can. I just haven't practiced. <laughs> That's cool. That's a yeah. great way to think. Now, my two are goalies. <laughs> there is no way I'm going to be a goalie. Yeah. I, um, I don't have that. the knees or the hips for it. <laughs> Um, and I don't want to be. I think you have to be a little sort of crazy yeah, yeah, <laughs> to be in that. Pucks. And both yeah. my kids they fit that bill. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's awesome yeah. to think like that. I I I never really thought about it like that. So I, you know, but that's that's why I like. But you do, have, Kim. You do. You, that's what you do with your clients. Right. But when I turned it on you, you got a little like. Huh. You, you got a little like excited about that. It yeah. is, yeah. and I think, and that's one thing I love about coaching is that there is not a session that goes by that I don't learn something yeah. from them. Whether it be, oh, yeah. you know, like the the one the the client of mine who's losing weight, and she said, "Do not talk to me about counting calories. Do not talk to me about cutting fats." And I'm like, okay, because that tends to be the big conversation, right, with weight loss. And yeah. so um, it's okay, well, well, we need to increase vegetables. I mean, very few people in this world are eating enough, you know, fresh right. fruits and vegetables. So let's start with that in the drinking the water. Yeah. And she gave me this book and she goes, this is the book that I'm going by. Because she had done the thing, the calorie counting and the cutting the fat, and she was miserable. She lost weight, but she was miserable. Yeah. So she gave me this book and I read it and I understood where she was coming from and she so greatly appreciated that I actually read this so that I would understand her point of view whether I agreed with it or not it yeah. doesn't matter because it's not about my journey yeah but then I I still I think about that in my own when I'm trying to stay healthy and trying to stay um, you know at a healthy weight and feel good I, I look to her and the things that she did, right? The, the goals that she set or the things that worked oh, for yeah. her. Uh -huh. I can say, okay, I'm gonna try. I need to. I'm gonna try that yeah. and see how that works oh, for me. Oh, my clients you inspire know? me all the time. Yeah, yeah. And other people, not just clients, but family members. And I always look for that inspiration. You inspire yeah. me. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. You did too. I, I, as I said, every time we have conversations. Um, you just get so much out of it, and that's why I love collaborating. Yeah. I don't believe in competition. I believe in collaboration yeah. because we can all bring something to the table and um, make something better when yeah. we come together. Absolutely. Like this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we still have a few more minutes. Okay. Um, what, I was going to ask you something else about, um, oh, photography, I meant to ask. Yeah. How do you bring photography? Because you, you had spoken about your love of photography, and I think I read something about you that yeah. you use that. So I created this class called Mindful Photography, and I originally did it, you know, it was six weeks long, but then I've kind of condensed it so we can do it in a two-hour or even a one-hour class. Yeah. And it's a way of um, practicing mindfulness yeah. using a camera. So especially oh, it's great that. for people who think, well, I, you know, mindfulness is breathing and sitting there and being quiet, and I can't because I have this monkey mind. That's not what mindfulness is. It doesn't have to be that. So this is a way of giving people a tool that they can use that they're comfortable with and still can start practicing mindfulness, start experiencing it. Yeah. And then once they do that, then, oh, okay, I can do that. So 
um, you know, I also teach a workshop like mindfulness senses, yeah. right? So just using the senses and how, um, you know, you can do, what, what can you practice that's using your eyesight or your hearing or your taste buds yeah. um, to help you still achieve what you you know, that, that sense of calm and grounding and the, and the brain resting, giving it a break, yeah. um, but in a way that's not, it's not so hard. Yeah, being in the, in the present. Yeah. Um, I listened to a podcast having to do with the chemistry that happens in our body mm -hmm. and where memories are laid down and how getting out of rehearsing the past because that's yeah. just reinforcing memory right. and the, um, uh, the, the, what's coming next also. Yeah. You know, so life is just learning and a surprise, like it, every right. day is Christmas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh, that that, but that being in the present here now is right. so critical. And without judgment, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes being mindful is you're sad and it's okay to be sad. Be with it, process those feelings. It's okay, don't judge it. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with your feelings. Yeah, that's beautiful. So. Um, we have, a, we have a, a few minutes left yeah. and I wanted to, uh, as I do with all my guests, ask mm -hmm. about what it takes, what top three things does it take oh. for you to be totally well? My yoga in the morning. Yeah. Um, you do it yourself? Yeah, I do it yeah. myself. So yeah. I took yoga for many, many years yeah. um, at the Durga studio in Harvard yeah. and it changed my life. I, I would cry for about a year doing yoga, right, the emotions, but now, so I get up and out of bed and I do yoga just to get my limbs moving, just to sort of feel grounded, get myself in that, it's like a meditation, yeah. um, you know, to be present. Uh, so that starts my day um, almost every day, um, whether it's long or short, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. I do something. Um, my diet, I don't, I really try to stay away from processed foods and sugars and um, chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, I have found sensitive food sensitivities associated with those things and I feel so much better. So um, that's a huge thing. Food can heal mm -hmm. um, and food can cause symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's really important. Um, and then the, the mind part. So the, I said the mind body for me, the mental health, again, that's um, dealing with your, your stuff, um, you know, not making excuses, find things that make you feel better. So it can be meditation. Um, the health coaching program actually helped me have better relationships with my family and how to communicate better. Mm -hmm. um, but that mental health, that if there's something wrong, get help, work with it. You know, it, you don't have to be miserable. You can be happy. There are ways of your perspective. Mm -hmm. How we see things are, is really important, and um, I work on it every single day, and um, I study it um, in many ways. So it's it's. I think mental health to me is one of the, the most important things that you can um, work on, and it's one of the biggest gifts you can give yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a healthy, healthy emotions and you know mind. Well, it sounds like you've really found a career that fits you in every possible mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And you are a gift. Thank you. So I, I hope lots of people will get to see this show and, and uh, learn how to connect with you, Kimberly S. Manning .com. Yes. And do you have any other uh, social media uh, connections, how people? Um, I'm on Twitter, but I don't use it. Okay. I am on Instagram. Okay. At, um, oh gosh, I think it's Kim S. Manning. Okay. Um, Keep looking. Yeah. <laughs> Just do the hashtag health coach and I'll probably come up somewhere. Uh, yeah, so that's social media. and um, But on my website is really like a primary. I, mean, I do Facebook and Instagram are probably the two, the two biggest okay. right now for me. All right. Well, um, well, I'm sure people will reach out to you, yeah. and of course, we'll post uh, the vid uh, this video on my website Great. and uh, YouTube channel. So awesome! Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for visiting with me today and sharing your perspective. Thank and you. All about you. Thank you, Joyce, for You're having welcome. me. This was fun. Yeah.